Once I do roll call, someone else like to lead the meeting? I mean, I'll lead the meeting for him. Okay. Uh, Chair Glassman is not here yet. Vice Chair Greenlee is here, but silent. Mayor Pro Tem Cunningham. Here. Council Member Davis. Here. Parks and Recreation Commissioner Sewell. Here. Committee Member Salmon. Here. And Committee Member Kelstadt. Here. Okay, moving on to approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda. Okay. I second. Okay. I will call vote. Aye. Uh, let's see. Um, Vice Chair Greenlee. Aye. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, no, let me have to skip. Abstain. Council Member Davis. Aye. Park and Recreation Commissioner Sewell. Wait, Aye. is this approval agenda, not minutes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. Aye. Committee Member Salmon. Aye. Committee Member Kelstead. Aye. Okay, now we will move on to approval of minutes. Item B, approved minutes from October 14, 2024, Public Art Advisory Committee. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Aye. Okay. Second. Okay. Anyone? Second. Second. Chair Glassman will abstain. Vice Chair Greenlee. Uh, gone at the moment. Mayor Pro Tem. Cunningham is abstaining as well. Council Member Davis. Aye. Park and Rec Commissioner Sewell. I wasn't here last time. That's right. Abstain. Committee Member Salmon. Aye. And Committee Member Kelsey. So. I don't think we have enough on the quorum to approve, so we just have to roll that. There she is. Hey, can you hear me now? Yay! Sorry, I'm. I had to resort. I had to resort to using my uh, iPad, and it's not set up for Zoom. So now I am. I'm fine. Okay. Great. Thank you. Do you approve uh, the minutes for October 14th? I do. So we have. Is that majority though? It's four. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll move on to item C, meet with public art master plan consultant 9.art to receive a presentation of select master plan elements. So I will turn it over to um, Molly and Olivia. Hi, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Nice to see you all. Thanks for having us again. Um, you all saw some of these ele the elements that we're going to be reviewing tonight. So we really wanted to get um, feedback and your thoughts and weighing in on how we've outlined two of these really important parts of the master plan, because these do inform some of the other sections. Um, so just wanted to yeah open this up for discussion. We'll go ahead and present, um, first of all, the process, um, two process slides, and then we'll dive into location planning. Um, and as we're going along, yeah, just want to make sure that we are getting all of your feedback and thoughts. Um, we have a couple of questions specifically for you as well. So any questions before we get started? No? Okay, great. Well, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And we will jump right in. All right. So we'll start off with the big picture, which is the outline the flow chart, which speaking of, this is in its rough draft form. Everything's in rough draft form. We have not had our designer go and beautify everything yet. We thought there's probably going to be edits. Um, so just roll with our, with our rough outline, please. Um, but the public art selection process for the city. So we have, that's what's outlined on this particular slide. So we'll start off with just initiating at the beginning of the year, identifying projects um, that you guys are, could work on for the year. Uh, from there, those um, projects, we would want to establish a budget and a timeline for each one of those, and then take that list of projects 
budgets and timelines to city council for approval to proceed. From there, we've actually outlined two different routes. And this came up in the um, stair, uh, the new stair piece that you guys just went through. This is a comment that came back from a few artists and we see this frequently across public and private sector. And that is the idea of an RFQ versus an RFP. And when you pay artists for their designs versus when you just solicit for a proposal for free. So the way that we've outlined that here and we recommend doing that is to actually do it by the cost of the project. So a project that is over 75,000, that's a bigger project, a bigger investment. It's probably gonna be a more robust piece. So that's where we're saying we recommend taking the route of going for an RFQ first. Um, so unlike the stairs, that one had a very tight timeline and not as big of a budget that would have followed this process down here, which we'll get into in a moment. But essentially with a larger budget and a larger project, we would recommend going out and saying, hey, artists, uh, for the folks that we're gonna do a public call for, anyone can apply for this. Um, and also I've listed invitational, which means you can invite artists to participate as well. We wanna make sure that you guys don't feel like you can only do the public call. You can also invite artists to participate. And essentially they would come back with their um, you know, letter of intent and some uh, precedent imagery of other works. And then you guys during an open meeting would use the scorecard that we're working on and create a short list of your top artists for the project from that RFQ. And from there, there would be an RFP just to those selected artists with a design stipend attached to it. So they're being paid for a more robust design for a larger budget project. After that um, RFP, there are two additional options here. And these follow the same track as down below. So you'll see this repeated. And that's essentially, do we open this up to the community to vote on or down below, do we do we not? Um, and there's a few different reasons for doing that. Timeline is always a big one. Um, but essentially, either way, the next step after getting those proposals back would be during an open meeting to score and rank those uh, proposals to help select the winner. The extra step up top is provided there in case you want to open it up to the larger community. Obviously the community can come and participate in any of these open meetings, but this is a more concentrated effort to really build in time and effort to push this out to the community to say, we wanna hear from you about these pieces. So in that case, we would recommend taking the top two proposals so you guys are already at the point where you're gonna be happy, the scores are in, and either one of those is gonna be a great option. And then you take those top two and say community vote on A or B, and the, that will then lead to who the winning artist is. Down below, we skip that step of the extra effort to try and bring the community in to vote, and you guys do your open meeting and your scorecard, and the winner is selected that way. From there, the proposal goes to city council for approval, and then you can start to um, initiate the contracting process. Down below, you'll see the other track, which is for project costs that are under $75,000. And you'll see that we simply skip the step of the RFQ and go straight to RFP, just like we did for the stairs. And um, it sounds like you guys got fabulous results from that anyway. So while there are artists who might not want to apply because there is not a design stipend, that doesn't mean you're gonna be completely limited and out of luck. So we do feel confident that as a city, it is okay to continue to do this, um, especially when you've got a process in place for more robust projects to provide a design stipend. Um, once that RFP comes in, again, the same tracks we just went through, we either get the top two proposals and have the community vote, or you guys go straight to winning selected proposal and then to city council and the contract initiation. Um, you'll note too, up at the top here, during the RFQ and RFP scoring and before 
um, final selections are made, we want to include public works for feasibility during these processes to make sure that there's nothing in these proposals that is going to be uh, detrimental to the project in terms of actually integrating it into the city in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I'm going to stop there and open it up for conversation and questions. Um, oh, and Oh, no, that's the next slide. I have a question for you guys on the next slide. <laughs> Thoughts? Olivia, did you want to add anything? I was just going to add quickly that, you know, at the beginning where we say identify your projects for the year, you know, we don't expect you to just say, okay, what are we doing? We obviously have rock, lots of recommendations we're putting in the plan um, for, for projects that you could tackle. And then when we dive into location planning in a moment here, you'll, you'll see what some of those are. Um, the other note I wanted to add was, you know, you see we have a key for RFQ versus RFP. We'll also have sort of a glossary that explains kind of best practices for what should be included in an RFQ and an RFP when you put that solicitation out, including mentioning to an artist if you're going to do the, the community kind of scoring that they would be participating in that if they get far enough along. So um, in addition to having this process, you know, you'll you'll have some some guiding information on what to include in each of these steps. Go ahead, oh, I have questions um, just in terms of process and clarification and things of that sort. When we look at, for instance, I'm looking at the RFP, the section, for instance, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah, uh, for when we're doing, first of all, the proposals during open meetings, in those two first sections on both instances, there can be public input during that time? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then when we get to the next one where it says the two top proposals are provoted, voted on by the community, I have two questions. Is there something that we can do a timeline on this, number one? You know, mm -hmm. before an open closed door date, like if you haven't made voted or whatever it's closed so that there's hmm. a time, a timeline in the bracket does that also in those um two proposals they're voting and voting only if it, i want to be clear they're not voting and have a suggestion i'd like for it to be purple I, i'm just making that Perfect. up do you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah so it's a very good clarifying point there's not change su suggestions or commentary it's just do you want A or do you want B? So, and um, to your point, yes, we would encourage a time frame to vote within, similar to when we did our community feedback. You know, it's open on this date, it closes on this date, rally around, let's, you know, do something around that, come and vote. Um, because if you don't vote, your vote won't get counted after this day. Um, and truly, yes, no, no suggestions needed. We won't have like an optional suggestion box. <laughs> right. And then my next question is, um, when it, when we get to that place, what if I'm making this up? What if all the proposals are in, let's say there, I'm going to make this up four, and the Art, public arts committee with the input of the first meeting clearly feel as though that there's one outstanding does that mean that they still get to have, they have to put forward a second one for community vote? No, that's no. that's discretionary. I mean, that's, that mean, you know what I'm saying? I think it's discretionary. Yeah. Discretionary. Okay, yeah. I'm one just asking. For selected. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just asking if there were nine people who said this is the one and it went out to vote and the community decided they wanted the other, then we would yeah. go with the other. That's that's my question. Yeah. Oh, okay. You put it out to the public. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's only that. questions. I just want clarification. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I no, like... I think it's your discretion. And um what Molly and I talked to Noreen and Angel about a bit is, you know, when to do the community voting and when not to. And you might consider a piece that the community has already been very, you know, vocal about wanting it there and they have a lot of thoughts and you can tell there's a lot of input coming. That might be one where it could be best to put it out to community vote because then you're showing like, hey, we hear your voices and we want to include you in this process. Mm -hmm. But I think for sure if there's a, a time where you say this is clearly the winner, then you go with that one. 
or if there's like we can't like it's difficult for us to determine yeah if it's split right. then it's that would be that's what i'm like, saying yeah but then like in this instance for what we're doing right now the timeline's so tight there's no way yeah. we can do it so like there's other constraints you know you can do it. so you can have both at all times you're not picking one or the other path is what you're saying no no you either put it out for a vote or, or you don't you choose yeah, yeah. Or you so, choose i have a comment here so because we are still developing this process and the history of this process has been very controversial and um, certain people during the process of this process have been <laughs> very um, adamant that the old way of doing things or their way of doing things was the right way to do it and it didn't work out so well. Hence, we are here with you, Nine Dot Arts, thankfully. Um, uh, I, I think we have to be very sensitive about how we put things forward because mm -hmm. some of the comments from the public that I have heard are that, um, you know, having people on committees and commissions and the city council involved in this means it's not a public process. So I think there is one little piece that's missing in all of this, and that is, you know, how how do we overcome that? I'm going to call it a bias for lack of a better word. So moving forward, so there's not criticism of this group, whether anyone on the city council is still on this public art committee moving forward after um, we have our master plan in place or not, that that process is so clear and and that's the one thing i'm not seeing in this oh, timeline oh. relative to what we've already experienced and i hope oh. some of the other members on this committee who've been around long enough understand the um the the, the public egos for lack of a better word that think their way of doing things is always the best way and is there any way in this process somewhere in this timeline that we can mitigate that hope that makes sense to y'all yeah that makes total sense yeah um i think there's a couple of ways so molly you know feel free to chime in but first of all you know we've noted here that all the discussions held by the committee are are you know open meeting i think we can make that more clear by actually adding a step in here that says you know posting on the public art website that's a recommendation you'll see we've made in the plan to update that page more frequently, posting on the website that, hey, you know, there's currently an RFP, RFQ out for X, X project. Here are the ways that you can um, share your thoughts about it. And then, you know, we list the, the time and date of this meeting and let people know that there's a way to attend, as well as offer that, that scoring, um, if that's something that you're all going to do. Um, additionally, I think, you know, this is just the, the sort of visual process, but there is going to be a written narrative that goes along with this for, you know, kind of appeasing both, both brains, right? So we can definitely reinforce that in the narrative section. And then another thing we talked to Noreen and Angel about is in addition to this plan, kind of as an appendix item, having sort of like a one pager, we like to call it of, you know, what is public art in Brisbane and how can I get involved? And this is something that would go out to the community so they know, okay, the ways I can get involved are, you know, attending these public art committee meetings and sharing my thoughts. I can constantly see the frequent updates on the public art um, webpage on the, the Brisbane website. I can uh, participate in the voting. And then, you know, there'll be a few other ways based on the recommendations that Molly and I pro are providing in the plan for some other sort of community centric projects. But I do feel like it's 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 a great point, Karen, for us to really drive home that this is a public process and we encourage everyone to to be involved. Thanks, Good. because I think that's been a bugaboo for a long, long time. And at this point, I think it needs to be put to bed. Yeah. And everybody needs to feel comfortable that their opinion matters, but we don't go backwards in the way we do things. This is a forward moving process. And however mm -hmm. the outcome is, is the result of everybody's input, just to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. 
think mm -hmm. that's what I was saying. It's not one or the other when you look at the line. We're going to do public. Go ahead. So we just went through and worked with public works for the new project. Should that be, and I'm asking the committee here, should that be in the budget or early on in the budget process? Because we're, we're combining budgets to get things done. So should we Please. communicate with them prior to putting the budgets together? And the one thing that the public I'm hearing is when we combine public works and art, they love that use of money uh, and <laughs> collaboration, like what we're doing with the steering yeah. So I think it's not very common, though. But mm -hmm. yeah, would we? Could, yeah, I mean, we should I mean, check in with them. Prior. Maybe, maybe shuffling that um, feasibility review with Public Works earlier in the process. Like exactly. if, if the committee is identifying projects, then maybe having an understanding of where integration can occur with Public Works projects early on before they decide to mm -hmm. move it forward to council. That might make more sense. Okay, that's it's such good. a political win too with the with the community. Right, it's a great use of funds and safety and art. Yeah, um, it's it's really a wonderful way to collaborate. That's and, all I got. I just have to say, I'm so glad there's a lot of people that were advocating for this process, and I just think this is amazing. I'm yeah. so glad we're not running on our own. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's something to be said for just transparency too. Like this will live in the plan, and the plan will be available to the public on your website. So, you know, when, when folks maybe have some concerns about their voices not being heard, there'll be multiple, you know, places to point them um, in terms of how they can get involved. Love it. And can how I, the process works. Can I also yeah. say something? Yeah. Can, mm -hmm. you guys, can you guys hear me? I can't see myself. Um, yeah. One of the criticisms that I've had mentioned to me is that people feel as if this committee is not qualified to be making these decisions basically because they have no idea who we are. You know, I mean, most everyone on this committee, I'm just speaking for myself, has a pretty deep art background in some way, you know, maybe not in, in strictly the visual arts or whatever art is, is before us, but we have a really um, deep, this committee itself has a deep knowledge of, of what we're doing. We're not I don't, I don't think we were picked out of thin air. I think that we were considered for our backgrounds and our talents. But what I would like to, to see the city do is to maybe give us a little portfolio as to who we are. You know, not necessarily what, you know, I'm on the Park and Rec Committee, but I'm all, I also happen to be a commercial designer, you know, and I also happen to have, you know, multiple degrees in art. So, you know, for people to say that we're not qualified basically is just out of ignorance of not really knowing who we are as people. And if we could put out some kind of um, credential page of who, who are the people on the arts committee, you know, and then that, then we could point to that and say, you know, many of us have many feet in the arts. We're not just people who landed on this committee by chance. I would just, I would just like something like that because I, I feel like those kind of comments and that kind of dismissiveness that, that comes up is is just out of ignorance and we can we can maybe cure that. We do have bios um, for all of you guys on our public art website. Remember when we did the bios of quite a while ago? And I think we didn't we just do a spotlight with you, Tom? Like well, wow. Yeah, they're all lives. They're all lives. <laughs> so we did try to do that, but the it bios is, are there, though. Yeah, we have the, our bios. Yeah, but the bios are on our public okay um, art website. So feel free to if you guys have any changes or want to do any up, updates. See, or I'm pulling anything, them up right now. Um, then uh, please do so. But they are there. I think okay, so talk. they so, like to throw judgment out first. <laughs> okay, so we can drag people to that. I'm I'm really glad. I thought there was something out there, but yeah. when people come at you like I have no idea, mm. you know, and say you're just not qualified, and I go, "Did you read my bio? Do you know what my bio is?" Yeah. You know, I want to be able to direct them someplace besides just me arguing with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One and thing we oh, oh, okay, we're gonna say the same thing, Molly. I think, yeah, I was gonna say I think Olivia and I are on the same page, but um one of the things that this plan will also help with the public perception of the committee is that we're actually trying to remove 
any barriers of having to have an art background to be so, part of the committee. Yeah. So by putting together the goals, the criteria, the scorecards, the plan, the process, the vision, all of that is in here. So even if you have no art background whatsoever, you should be able to be on this committee and do it successfully. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I totally think that that is why we're doing this. And I'm so happy that we're doing it because it makes things crystal clear, you know. Great. Good. Well, hopefully, yeah, we will just remove that barrier altogether. <laughs> <Good. Not fine. laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to keep on, keep us going. Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on. I have um, one brave raised help. Oh, Raven had her hand up for a oh, second. Sorry. Raven, go ahead. Oh, sorry. That's me. This is Diane. Sorry. Oh, Diane. Hold on. Yeah. Man. Sorry. I, ca I can't see what's, I can't see what's listed. Mm -hmm. Um. For oh. Oh, Are you back? And video. There you I, go. I don't know what it's doing. Anyway, no, I mean, it says in the, in, in, like, who's on this committee that we are supposed to have, you know, someone who's an art person, someone who's just like basically a, a business a, representative. Yeah, a, a a citizen from the city and someone who's a business person. Yeah. Like that's in the mandate for this committee. So this idea that, you know, that that you know that 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 I I, I mean I think it's I think it's just a it's it's a it's 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 a side it's a side issue that I think we need that that there are other ways to combat it. Mm -hmm. But that it's like that is that is in the setup of the com of the committee that anybody can be uh, can apply to be on this committee they don't have to have an arts background yeah Obviously. i think that's a great point and I, and then to that i think it's like we're all living with these pieces of art every day yeah, right and we're not here to be art critics we're here to say like as somebody who lives in this community what are the pieces of art that feel like brisbane and no matter how, you know, how, what your portfolio is in the arts, no one's better to determine that than us, whether we have in our background or not, we have the qualification of living in Brisbane and understanding the community and understanding the vibe and the feel of what makes sense here. And that's why we're qualified to, you know. Well, we also have a wonderful master plan exactly. that we'll be able to follow. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and the... And the and the other issue is, is that like the committee hasn't had too many projects going forward. I think that this criticism is something that is going as we move forward and there are more projects. This is a criticism that is going to die out. Mm -hmm. Agree. That's the you goal. Know that <laughs> as it be as as these projects come before council and as there is more discussion about them, I just think that this is a conversation that is going to die out in the community, especially if we are providing the outreach to the community to say like, no, you are a part of this process. We have reached out to you in order to create this master plan. You have been a part of this and you are absolutely, as is every citizen in this town, a you know, you know, it is your right to come before the council and to speak on these these issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are we are an advisory we are an advisory committee to the city council. That's all we are. We are presenting these things. This is our best advice as to how to proceed forward to create a a public arts collection for the city of Brisbane but we are an advisory council committee to the city council and every single citizen in the city of Brisbane is allowed to come forward and voice their opinions and I think as we move forward with this process more and more frequently I think that will become more apparent yeah. I think you're, I agree. Okay, so in the interest of time, there is actually a lot more we need to get yeah. to in this document. So I want to move on to the next page. Yes. 
So this is the process for private developers. Because they are going to bring quite a bit of money for arts. And so we want to make sure that it's very clear to them up front that there is a mandate, there is a requirement, several different routes for them to take. So the community development would start off by notifying the, uh, excuse me, community development department would notify the developer of the policy. You have to do this. Um, between that and actually identifying plans, we wanna make sure that the Brisbane Art Master Plan is provided to them. That's really, really important. One, because this document will be in there, <laughs> the process, but also so they understand what it is that you all are trying to accomplish as a city so that as they this make their decision on how they're gonna move forward, they can do it in the best interest of the city. Um, after they're provided that information, the private developer identifies some art opportunities on the site plan. And from there, we have three different paths for them to take. The first, give us your money. Give <laughs> <laughs> to the art fund uh, the required amount and we will take it and do magic with it. Thank you very much. Number two, request assistance from all of you, from the um, public art advisory committee to say, hey, we're not equipped to do this. Can you help us do this? This would then um, allow you all to decide, do you have enough capacity in over the timeline of the project to take this on internally and help them? If the answer is yes, then you would go ahead and bring them along and follow the public art selection process that we just outlined. If the answer is no, then referring them to a partner, a trusted partner, somebody you guys like working with or that you know is good, um, that could work as an independent, like such as an independent firm. Nine dot arts would be an option in that. Um, from there, once if that was the way they went, once the artwork is selected through an independent firm, the developer would submit the required documentation to the appropriate staff for review. I'm also now before we jump in where these two roads meet, I'm going to jump down to the third option, which is for them to execute independently. From there, again, we're going to make sure that that Brisbane Art Master Plan is front and center. So just as a reminder, you all, <laughs> you got this at the beginning, but don't forget, this is the master plan. This is what we envision for our city. From there, again, once artwork is selected, they would submit the required documentation. From there, you guys would hold an open meeting, again, open meeting, um, and make a recommendation to either move forward to the city council, or if there's something that's either missing or you don't think is you know, gonna follow the, the correct submission guidelines or something they need to go back to the drawing board on, you have the option of rejecting that and saying no, and then the developer can revise the art proposal and resubmit back to you all. Now, and if it goes to city council um, to vote and the um, city council decides no, then again, we're going to follow that path for the developer to revise things and go back. If the city council approves, then the developer would move forward with commissioning the artwork. Um, and then we have a suggestion here that once the project is complete, includes some sort of an event, a ribbon cutting, an artist lecture, something where the community can come out, mm -hmm. celebrate the public art, and they feel a part of the community as opposed to a separate entity. There's one other thing on here that we did not put in because we wanted to bring it to you all as a question, which is there is an option currently in the process um, for you all to have the developer donate the art to the public art collection to the city. Now, this poses some questions. If they're donating the art to you and it's on their property, what you know when what if you want to move it what if you want to relocate it what if they sell the property what does that mean for your budgets moving forward because now all of a sudden you are in charge of maintenance and upkeep of this piece um so you're going to have to put additional dollars aside to take care of that so that you'll see that we have not included that on here because we wanted to bring it to you guys to say 
How do you feel about the, that portion? Because this is the time to change that. If they cannot donate it to the city, because we don't want that to be something that's doable, or do we say you can donate it, but it's under strict scrutiny and acceptance, and we'll make a document yeah. about how that works, we can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and open it up for conversation. Yeah, because is I have to, I yeah, can see, like, like, think about Sangamo, right? Sigma, we didn't move forward with their, it didn't end up happening. They donated the money to the public art fund, but let's say that they, it went the way it was intended and we actually put their sculpture, we put the sculpture in. Well, Sigma is no longer there. Mm -hmm. So if there's a new tenant that moves into that building and does serious retrofit or upgrades, now they also would need to contribute to the fund, but they, that piece of art that's there is not, has no, you know, Connection. Connection to them. So when, like, what do we do about that? I think it's something that we should talk about. I never really. Yeah, and I want to follow up to that too. We, yeah, we've, we've sort of mm -hmm. all modeled this around before and it's like, not just that example, but we talked about that example and it was like, ooh, what happens then? You know, that's, that it, that mm -hmm. is a quandary. But what, what happens if, um, I don't know, some, some people from the desert want to donate their artwork to be put in places? I think ran random artwork or rogue artwork, I don't know what we would call it at that point. That's, that's a whole different conversation in addition to what Madison just said. Could, could oh, the art yeah. be um, following also the same, pro like you can donate your art if it follows exactly our requirements. Mm -hmm. That's restricting though. I mean, you know, and we all know that all of us are never going to agree on what is the most perfect piece of art. So no, you know, no, a requirement for safety, for upkeep, for like basic, like not even like if we like it or not, but mostly like, is that going to fit within the space? like basic requirements that we would have to come up with. It might have to be a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it have to it's be hard to determine. On different space. On it's different. hard to like to figure now all the things that might happen that you would need to build in. I think it would probably be easier. To That's why, yeah, you case. had said a suggestion number two yeah. when you were talking about this uh, in the over. It seems to me that's we where to, yeah. we may want to consider it would be putting our energy in so that we're continually learning more about it. Yeah, and we've done it before with, it's basically like an art donation um, form that gets filled out and scrutinized by the um, Public Art Advisory Committee. And then it has to go to city council to be approved and accepted. So it's quite a process to donate the, like and we can make it as complicated or as simple as possible. Right, yeah. but certain. it'll be, it'll still be something that we can discuss Diane, once it happens at the time, yes, Diane. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I mean, I, I would say, I would say that as, like, my my preference on this would be that as long as the company is is in their building where they've installed the artwork, that they are responsible for it. But if they yeah. move out, then it becomes the property of the city and this and the and and our and part of our collection and then it becomes our responsibility to figure something out for it like yeah. where where we move it i mean we do have some public lands that are available with that is that sometimes the art can be sold okay. with property um, yeah. and so yeah. the person who buys it would then take ownership of it and that is a that's a, that's a contract question uh, between right. the purchaser um and the seller yeah so, we kind of talked about that that you know yeah it has to be built into like if someone's going to sell the property Absolutely. or whatever that it's built into their contract for sure that they are taking on <laughs> the maintenance care of this artwork and it's not to be moved it's not to be whatever it, it's kind of like how we inherit stars from each other when we buy houses in the city yes <laughs> you know like 
I mean, actually, <laughs> I mean, we have a star that we inherited from the people that we bought the ho- our house from. So, you know, that, but, but it does seem as if like, to me, the lot, to me, the logical idea is, is that, you know, the, the person who, or the company that originally purchased the art is responsible for it up until the point where they, they pass that property on to someone else and then it would seem as if the new owner of the property can choose that they want to take that they want to maintain that art or they want to donate it on to the city yeah, yeah. No, 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 no 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 i disagree oh, with no. you i think you should not have this conversation yeah. now because i yeah. think this is a actually okay. a I don't, conversation I don't, I don't, for yeah. later but yeah and i think no, no. to the city i think is what the concern is you know like for them like really big piece from like the sangamo like Right. Okay, also we own it. Are we required now yeah. to move it off there? Yeah. Property? Now do we move that it where we like put hundreds it? Hundreds of thousands of dollars to yeah. move it. You know, but like so phase I, three. That thing, the one on phase yeah. three, is like thousands of yeah. pounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, okay. Well, and I'll just mention that just because they have an option to donate doesn't mean you're going to accept. To accept. Yeah. 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 Fair and enough. That's the, yeah. That's why I think it should be case by case. Yeah. Because yeah. then we can have a discussion that's yeah. open depending on it as opposed to putting some guideline in that we feel that we have to constantly narrow the dis- the area for discussion and, and exploration. Then right. But then what happens then if we say no, but they want to get rid of the artwork? They bought it. They can do whatever they want. No, they can't, though. They still own that for the city because that was the requirement from the past oh, tenants they, or past they, owners, they, right? They, they can also put it money. up for all yeah, well, they that? can also put the piece up for auction if it's their property. They can and sell then it. give the money back to the and then give the money back to the city. Because now the city it? never really, we only enjoyed the art mm-hmm. money until then. <laughs> Again, I think this is a conversation yeah. for another time. Yeah, because there's a lot to go over still, and yeah. I think this is like something. I think what we need to do is pull up best practices from other cities and how they how they navigate yeah, that. that. Or could you guys come back and let us give us some information on that? Yeah, that would be the way to do that. We have a whole we have a whole slew of recommendations around donations. Good. For, good, good. Um, but we wanted to see where you guys were sitting with it. As well. well, we don't not know. Really. That's the clearly <laughs> not sure. Okay, <laughs> Diane, yeah, you want more comment? We are obviously not in agreement. Not ready <laughs> for that one yet. Okay, we'll come back. Okay, with- moving on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, location planning. So we have put together um, for art location planning um, key recommendations and art typologies that we've outlined in here. Um, so we're going to go through those different priority locations for public art. Um, thinking about these key locations so that you guys, you know, have projects you can implement over the next, you know, three, five, and 10 years. So this is our big broad view. Um, The number one is the entry points and gateways to the city. So we find that this is quite a popular topic of discussion (laughs) that could be accomplished um, and should be it should be prioritized, um, especially with Baylands eventually coming in and starting. So we recommend starting there um, with an iconic piece of art, and you'll see these typologies in a moment. Um, Question for you, really uh-huh. quick. Um, I think like eventually it may may set make sense to have one also in the most northern part of the city as you enter the Baylands development because most people will assume that that's San Francisco. Uh, so that's you may want to have something over, you know, at the very tip of this map yeah. up at the top. Yeah, as, you know, part of the Baylands development is going to be in San Francisco. Brisbane. Part of the Baylands development, most of it's going to be in Brisbane. And I think, like, denoting that in some way. Mm-hmm. Love that There's idea. Some- Probably more important than the other one. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the other one is more for the locals. Yeah. Yeah. Diane. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I think your hands still oh, up. I'm sorry. I am sorry. You're getting tired. 
<laughs> no, sorry, I I that must have been left on from before. No, but okay, okay. yeah. Um. Okay. Good. Well, I I love that idea. I think we should add that in. Um. Number two, parks and trails, obviously a very popular one. Um, and we've got the, obviously the park downtown, we've got Firth Park over here or the community park. And then really one of the areas, the uh, area to, to think about is the Crocker Park Recreational Trail. Um, there's so many amazing opportunities there. Olivia and I had the pleasure of walking that trail and I just, my camera is full of all the opportunities for art along there. Um, so obviously yeah. we expand will as we well. also will we also include stairways like just in the list of because it talks about like the raccoon that's in the canyon. So mm -hmm. would we also denote like because stairways seems to be something that we're also focusing on too. So would you just lump that in with parks and trails? I think so because they do act as a trail essentially to get mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. May I just add one thing that um, CAFE, which is the Cities for Age Friendly Excellence, which I've been on for the last couple of years now, um, uh, through the AARP and the World Health Organization, is identifying areas around the city where you can do things that are age friendly. And, and it's not only age friendly, but I'm just going to say slash art friendly and they kind of combine quite mm -hmm. a lot but um we can have a separate conversation about that um but the people who are on the cafe board for brisbane uh, did a map about where places around brisbane could have i know you guys are gonna go oh here she goes again benches but art benches and other artful and useful uh things to put in in those areas oh fantastic okay. where can we find that um send me an email i'll direct you to the right place but um so there's a lot of information from the county and potentially a lot of money to add to that pot for that process as well so you know, on and Madison had talked about a long time ago, just the idea of surprise art. And we talk about benches and we talk about getting people out into the community. And and so that is that is missing from this map. And we can uh, between Madison and I and uh, my Lisa, you can probably do it, too. Um, we, we can identify these maps that people have put together for that purpose. Yeah. I can help with that. Yeah, that thanks. would be fantastic. Yeah, that would definitely fall into these discovery pieces uh, that are also functional. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we've identified the skate park. Um, and here we're not recommending doing just one thing. Uh, our recommendation here is to actually establish a rotating mural program here because it is such oh, a- I love that idea. I yeah. love that idea too. Love it. Yay. <laughs> I think it'll really help the community feel like, oh, you know what? If if I don't love that piece, that's okay. It's gonna change in a few years. <laughs> so and it also allows uh, a lot more of uh, public participation as well as uh, different projects of way that it's it's installed and in, and it's envisioned. Yeah, and it'll allow um, for, you know, you don't have to continue to keep up and maintain one mural. If you're refreshing it every five years, it's going to look great every five years. <laughs> yeah, also it keeps it fresh and current, which I think the skate park would appreciate. Yeah. So are we talking about, in? because like right now we had this like dragon pop up inside the park, yeah. right? Clearly for the skaters. And like, I know it's mentioned like the main wall. And are you referring, there's like, are you referring to the one that's, to the wall that's facing the park or are you referring to something else yeah, within the, wall the park? The yeah. one that's on the backside of the quarter pipe facing the yep. park. Yeah. yeah. On the street. Let's see, because I'm almost feeling like something inside. You, well, there's 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 yeah, we could add that. But I think this is it can be it can be the entire 
space too, right? It can be the yeah, core. True, true. Yeah, I think that's like, like we kind of have a canvas here and then that canvas at the entrance where the dragon is currently. Cool. So okay. the... so there, there are surfaces all over that, that, that park that could be right. imagined differently and, and changed up all the time. That's which exactly. I think is really cool. Yeah. It's not going to take too much of it. It to be on the Mm -hmm. Pick, you know, three different locations yeah. and switch them out Within on a different, on different um, cadence. Timeline period. Always something fresh coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Love that. So I think like adding in like, mm -hmm. you know, the exterior wall or um, it says like on the skate park prominent wall or other space, like we could add it, or other spaces within the park. Yeah. Yeah. Let it be a little more flexible. Yeah. Sure. Um, number four, Sierra Point and the Ridge. Um, and one of the things here that we really, that we noticed was that when we went over there, we felt like there's something that's like not connecting the space to you guys. It felt a little disassociated. And I think one thing that would be really interesting to, um, expand over there into Sierra Point and the Ridge would be the fire hydrants because that's something that is truly an identifier for Brisbane and that's like comes through really strong and that's such a simple thing for folks to for to implement and to do and we just feel like it could be really powerful to bring that throughout other spaces as well and eventually the Baylands as well. Mm -hmm. um, additionally um, number five, neighborhood installations and pop-ups. So thinking more about temporary art, um, pop-up installations. And then of course, we also have this, the tunnel, which we love and thought was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the amazing art that comes through there, encouraging that as temporary pop-up art, um, to mm -hmm. really help foster that local pride. Cause you guys have like the really cool fence that was done and people do their own little pieces here and there in the neighborhood. So, you know, allowing those things to happen and encouraging them um, through the master plan as opposed to something that feels um, like it's not a lot. Dirty. Um, I just have a comment about this section, if that's okay. Please. I, I think it's important to have some distinguishing criteria and language around city property versus private property. Oh. Yes. So. Okay. Good point. <laughs> and then finally, number six, which is of course the Baylands. Um, and for that, you know, that is going to be a long term goal. Yeah. And really thinking about working with those developers to incorporate permanent public art at key, key connection points specifically, making sure that those are incorporating, you know, these areas where folks are going to be passing from one area into another. Um, and then thinking about in the short term, you know, mm -hmm. as things are developing, what can we do to encourage um, art mm -hmm. and artistic expression during construction periods to get the community to buy in maybe a little bit more and also some additional participation and build excitement around it. All right. So in each of these subsequent maps, we just go a little bit more in depth about the locations. Um, and then you can see up here, we've got our typologies. So we're marking this particular location here as an iconic piece. And we have a little descriptor for what these mean later on. We got toilet. toilet. I said what you said to yeah. I was a, I kept trying to figure We're it out. teasing you guys about your icon, your toilet <laughs> icon. Oh. It looks like, it looks like <laughs> one day. Toilet. We're like, it's one day. Well, it took me a oh, minute. That's so funny. That is funny. <laughs> so maybe change that. <laughs> we'll change that out. Instead of a bust, we'll make it a full figure. That's yeah. hysterical. <laughs> you can tell we look at these things too often. Yeah. We don't want to put a giant toilet at the front of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Duchamp will be so sad. Right? <laughs> 
<laughs> the complete board is spilling. <laughs> um, Parks and Trails, we've got a little bit more um, in-depth locations here with functional art and discovery art, specifically focusing on areas like the crosswalks and making right. those artistic expressions so that you know you're still on the trail. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. And then of course, building those relationships with the um, buildings that are along there. There's so many mural opportunities. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Totally it really is. Right, it's so, so much blank canvas. Um, and then of course, also incorporating those functional pieces along the way as well for, for rest and respite, um, making sure that there's great benches and cool spaces to hang out in. Um, for the skate park, again, you know, I think we can, we'll elaborate on this one, Madison, to your point, I love that idea. There, look at all the surfaces we have. We've got a wall. We've got, you could have someone yarn bomb this railing, you know, there's just a lot that can be yarn bomb. Um, Sierra Point in the Ridge, again, just like really trying to bring in that known entity of the fire hydrants. My only question with that is that the ridge I know is a, is an, has an HOA. And I don't yeah. know if you would, you would probably have to, you know, pass something by them to do that. Right, but I just really think it's, it's important that we just at least put it in a master plan to say this is a possibility. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You're Right. It's also city property, so I don't think that like I mean yeah, it's not really we good. can do what we want. The building, okay, okay. good. Property. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, well, like all the hydrants the are hydrant city, property. city property. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, like, I see. so if the HOA, so they like, like, couldn't tell us not to. It's not like they're it. providing the front, their own I utilities for the water. water. Yeah, that's right. That's true. I say you just come in one night and paint them all and ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> I love it. It's an art bombing. <laughs> Yard bombing and art bombing. Um, so we did capture a few of these different um, elements that we thought were really great pop-ups that were already happening. And to your point, Noreen, we will definitely decipher um, between the two, public versus private. And then Baylands, of course, there's a lot happening here. Um, we we don't want to go ahead and pretend that we know where these art locations are going to happen at this point, um, but we know that we're going to want to have functional art, discovery art, temporary mm -hmm. art. And now that we're talking about it, we're going to want to add in an iconic art piece as well. Yeah, for sure. Maybe, yeah. 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 Definitely needs finding new one. Well done. Thank you. That's everything we have for you today. And we do have, just so you know, we're gonna have um, in the plan, we're gonna have a slide for each of these icons that shows precedent type art so that you it makes sense to everyone visually as well. Like what is iconic? It's not a toilet actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wanna confuse anyone. <laughs> um, any, I know we've kept you guys a long time tonight. So I appreciate you hanging in there and sticking with us and all the great comments and discussion we've had. Anything additional? I know you have other things you probably need to get on to. I, I just yeah. want to say one thing, if you don't mind. Um, so the, the Bayshore Highway going through Brisbane, just, just so you know, 90% of the traffic that comes down from Geneva to Bayshore, you okay. used, to go, used to go north to get wow. on Highway 101 South. Over the last 20 years, we made it, we, whoever we is in uh, state and county, made it a lot easier for 90% of the traffic that has no destination and no origination from Brisbane to come through Brisbane on Bayshore 
and get on to Highway 101 south of Brisbane. So consequently, the traffic coming through us on Bayshore Boulevard has, I, I don't even know what the quadruple is, but traffic is traveling at 75 miles an hour. The thought process by some of us is to make uh, through traffic a little less obnoxious and maybe make them go back to where they were going north of uh, Geneva to get onto 101 South to calm our traffic moving forward. If there's anything artistically we can think of that might help that process, might just be interesting to interject at this point. Very clowns. Well, if you know the Avenue Extension, we'll do it. That way. If it's, yeah, yeah, so we can't. That's you know. 20 years out. I'm thinking yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to throw that yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mix of where we're going. It will happen, will yeah. it? Cool. All right. Yeah. If no one has anything else, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you uh, all. for all your hard work. We're looking forward oh, to man. the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for having us. And thanks Full for your good final discussion. draft at your next meeting. So get ready. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. You. Work, wonderful yeah. work. Thank, Thank you. All. you. Okay. Bye. All right, well, we'll see you then. Um, we'll go ahead and move on now to item D update regarding the Midtown mural. From that mm -hmm. Yeah, this just very brief. So, Angel and I had heard from the team that was doing the restoration of the Midtown mural. Um, we had recognized that there was some wear and some fading and kind of chipping of the paint. So they came out a couple of times and assessed it and tried to identify what was causing that. Um, and then they did some sample tests on it and found some new products or materials that they could use to better restore it. Um, so they're gonna work on that in the new year. They're gonna send us a proposal in January, I believe they said. So do you pay um, for that? No, I don't, think, I don't so. think so. It's okay. coming out of their insurance. I'm yeah. say, yeah, yeah, I'm not because, quite sure. Yeah, I would yeah. like to know because didn't we pay for yeah, that? We did. Pay? Okay. Yeah. Really recently. Yeah, it's yeah. degrading very fast. It yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, and they are the it's number hard. one. Like they work with her, like for all of her murals. With Mona. Much, with, yeah. with Mona. And yep. um, they've had that same issue with a couple other places. And they've been, they think that they've traced it back that in the early 2000s, the manufacturer of the paints changed their solution, like, yeah, solution yeah. somehow. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it's not holding the same. It's, so they're having to learn a new way of treating what paints that Mona uses um, using, before. Yeah, so, testing some Italian so products. Yeah, so now they're having to test this new system. Okay. Yeah. Thing. So, so anyway. we'll get a more in-depth, like, like uh, the new year plan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Global but, warming. Yeah. Mm. Um, does anyone else have any other comments before on that before we move on to public comment? No? Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up to public comment. Is there anyone who should not speak at this time? And I didn't receive any emails leading up to the meeting. Okay, seeing no one would like to um, discuss our next meeting date. Um, so our next meeting is proposed for Monday, December 16th. But um, I think we'd like to maybe move it up to the week before that. So I know that with looking at schedules, the ninth is challenging for um, Camille, but how does everyone's schedule look like for the 10th of December? Good. Looks okay. good. Yeah, well, I think they, it should be I think it should be good. We'll confirm with them that they will have a draft of the full master plan, which is the next step by then. Okay, can we check to them? Karen, does that work for you? You can. You're on mute, but yes, when you're done looking. Good, Good. okay, awesome. All okay. right, so if something changes, you'll let us know. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll plan on the 10th and we'll go ahead and adjourn. Great, thank, okay. you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good meeting. Well, Good night. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Where are you going to have dinner?